So uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you all for coming. Um, firstly, for me, it's very emotionally uh, yeah, satisfying to be here, having left Israel about six years ago um, as a young architect going to Germany to pursue a master's in computational construction. Um, Germany was considered to be uh, so far ahead of Israel, where we were just a small country. Um, and here we are in what I think is a, is a global summit for construction technologies, and I'm very happy to uh, be a part of it and really glad to, to see all of you here. I think we're all a part of the, the revolution in making Israel uh, the startup nation disrupt a little bit of the uh, construction sector. So I'm going to start my talk with... Um, yeah. And hopefully this will work. Just a second. Time out. <laughs> okay, good. So we're going to start out um, with what is a kind of a paradox, iconic architecture for the masses. We're all uh, talking about how to build quicker and how to create it more efficient. And the question is, um, what are we really building? This is a design that I've made which talks about freeform architecture, which is a movement that's uh, quickly transforming the built environment. Yeah, so if you can do it from there, thank you. Uh, we're seeing a trend right now of building these freeform structures all over the world. And the biggest problem that we have with it is the uh, cost of construction. You're gonna have to do it on your own, so I'll give you the sign. Um, so. The market speaks for itself. We can see that wherever these buildings are being built, we see raise uh, of property value, increased demand, and uh, added permits. So now the question is, why aren't we seeing more of this? Why is our uh, built environment looking uh, like it looks today? So we, we can see that the biggest difference um, and what really prevents it from reaching the mainstream is the high cost of advanced manufacturing. Uh, advanced manufacturing, we saw um, in the last presentations, uh, active in manufacturing of cars, aerospace, and the question is, how do we bring that to uh, the construction sector? Because this is basically what our world looks like today. Uh, we all like to talk about technology and how to disrupt the world, but in the end, if we talk about building faster and quicker, uh, using today's technology, we're going to have more of these. And we need to ask if this is really, are we so happy with these that we want to create more of them? Or maybe we can use technology to actually um, build something a little bit um, different. So here's a project uh, which is called the Morpheus Hotel by Zahra Hadid, which demonstrates this new age of construction and how our cities can look like tomorrow. But in order to understand the problem, we have to look inside and ask, what is actually so special about it and what prevents it uh, from becoming our everyday reality? So if we look at a, a technical aspect, we can see here what is called a node, which is the connection between these bars. And every node, when we come to a freeform construction, has to be different. So if we build a standard building, every node will be different. But when we create a curved shape, we have to create thousands and thousands of unique components which can make the building up to 20 times more expensive. And we can see here what a node may look like. Uh, it's the connection of all these bars. So imagine you have to make 5,000 unique ones uh, compared to just using the same one. Uh, Rudy from Awub can tell you um, how complex that is. Uh, that is uh, what high-end engineering firms do. That is, I would say, uh, the Olympus of architecture feasible for maybe 0.1% uh, in Western countries. And we have to ask, how can we build more like this? So if we look at uh, this building by Zaha Hadid, it looks very smooth, very appealing, and it may even look easy to construct because it's so smooth. But if we look under the cover, we see a very, very complex uh, substructure that involves thousands of different workers. Uh, of course, uh, worker safety is very problematic on these areas, and the costs are getting higher and higher. The new project, uh, Beijing Airport, from Zahadid, demonstrates, again, this smooth and curvy architecture. But when we look at what's going on behind the scenes, we see that it is far from being feasible. And it's only, uh, I would say, a one-off project, unfortunately. 
So how can we address this problem? Universities in Europe are setting up uh, labs all over Europe in universities like the ETH and uh, Stuttgart, and we're gonna see a couple of examples. This is an example from the University of Stuttgart uh, displaying weaving as a construction methodology. So you're seeing something which has no substructure at all, but um, these, um, I would say, spider webs that are becoming completely structural. You can see here in this short video that there's actually a synchronous motion between the robot and the actual pavilion. Every motion is synchronized with a digital model, and we're seeing uh, an effect of AI and robotics in the making of this pavilion. Now, when we look at this movement, we can see this beautiful movement and, of course, the end product. But we have to ask the question um, of feasibility and how does that actually affect our built environment in the end besides being a one-off project. There's another project that was done uh, in Stuttgart and demonstrates uh, using wood and novel um, applications and how to create these elements that are completely robotic fabricated. And you can see here that they are completely created uh, in digital design and then created by the robots, as you can see here. So every panel is, of course, different. It's fabricated by the robots, and it creates a very unique architecture, as you can see here. And if we have to ask another question about the feasibility, of course, we'll ask about the ceiling, we'll ask about um, the waterproofing, and most importantly, could we really afford to create that as a mainstream uh, building environment? That is still unclear because most of the projects done in Academy are resource efficient and are, of course, driving the construction sector um, to new innovation, but not really changing the market. So here we see another example of using concrete um, on a cloth. So instead of, um, we have a lot of people from the concrete industry here, so uh, usually concrete is used as a uh, molded material. And here what they've done is something very interesting. A friend of mine called Maria Popescu from the ETH has taken cloth, which was digitally designed. It was then created as a fabric, and then the concrete was sprayed on top of that, and that created uh, this amazing form that you can see here. This is called a form finding technique, and you can see here the uh, actual fabrication process. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit um, about my work in the field with Foldstruct and what I do. So, as I mentioned before, I'm an architect, and my main question, or journey, I would say, is to ask how can we take all of these technologies, who, you know, these technologies are already there, but apply them in things that would be industry standard, using industry standard materials and tools. And I investigate that in, in a few forms. One of them is uh, through the um, startup called Foldstruct, which deals with AI design to fabrication. And I will show you a few examples um, of how we can treat our materials a little bit differently. So let's look at wood. We're looking here at a sample of an ancient wood joint with, which has existed for hundreds, if not thousands, of years, taking two blocks of wood um, and combining it together. And if we look at that, we see that if we take this and turn it into a parametric system, then we could actually have the same type of construction. We can update the detail, and then we can achieve things like this with the same type of wood. This, of course, would become the digital model that would go into the robotic fabrication, and this would be the end result. If we look at modular construction, what can we do with that? So the biggest problem with modular construction, we know the benefits, of course, it's much quicker, uh, perhaps even easier to construct, but at the end, if we're doing the same thing over and over again, we're bound to have uh, basically large cubes and blocks filling up our cities. And that, of course, is not something desirable. And for that reason, we're not seeing, amongst others, we're not seeing this come into the market. So what if we can take all of these and just form them in a different way? And this is uh, an experiment. Uh, that we've done using modular elements that are actually these same very modular prefabricated elements, using parametric design to pile them up differently and creating uh, a new type of architecture using that. Uh, here you can see another example of a facade which uses those same elements but just a little bit differently. Uh, biomimicry is something that I also like to look into with my work and asking how can we take something that exists in nature. So here you can see um, 
well, an eye of a fly, if you recognize that, and try to use that logic in order to build thin shell structures. What you see here on the bottom is the end result, and here we're looking at a one mold solution. So we're actually just using one mold and cutting it differently every time. By assembling them together, we get something like this. If we were to design this as a completely freeform structure as is done today, we would need about 2,000 different molds, which would make it very expensive. But using this type of algorithmic design, we could design something that is built with the same mold, as you can see in the pictures. So you can see that when talking about thin shell structures, we have a variety of materials and finishes, which I'll demonstrate in the next uh, project that talks about folding. Here is an example of how you can create freeform concrete with molds that are created out of straight lines. But now I'd like to ask you a question. Uh, what is the simplest way to construct something? So Einstein said things should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler than that, which means if we take a piece of paper and fold it, uh, we will have a structure in a very, very simple way, but that structure is completely, um, I would say, unmanaged. Uh, so we don't know what happens with those folds. It's just a piece of paper. But what if we add some logic to it? Then we'll have a crane. What if we take that logic of a crane and apply that to architecture and think about, could we actually build something on a grand scale? Because if we use thin materials, just like it works on paper, it should work in reality. So here are a few experiments that are looking at what can be done with it. And as we were talking, the big promise, of course, uh, demands uh, a solution. So I'll show you the solution right now that starts with algorithmic design, which is something that um, I've done in recent years, investigating folded structures on a mathematical base, and then applying that to automated design, which works off of freeform structures and a one-click solution create facades that are based on the modules that we choose. What's special about it is that it's not only the look of it, but it's meant to be fabricated in a very certain way, which I will demonstrate. These are the types of buildings that we can get in these parametric adaptable systems. And then we have to talk about sheet materials and putting it to the test and asking how is that different from anything else that we've seen. So if we want to go from laconic to iconic, we'll have to go and use these same materials and the same structure, but just use it in different ways going from design to reality. And this is a project that was done in the University of Detmold with the help of Alucobond and 3A Composites, a German-Swiss company. And it demonstrates actually a new way of constructing um, without any substructure at all. And of course, minimizing things like construction time, nodes, and substructure. You can see here, we're all talking about a new life to industry standard material using AI algorithms and robotics. So this is a bench that was firstly done to evaluate the method, and it was constructed in about two to three minutes with no welds, no cuts, no connections. Everything is just a one-fold solution. We can see here that if we can go from one sheet to a folded three-dimensional element by folding rather than molding, then we could achieve mass customization for industry standard prices. Finite element analysis will teach us about the um, actual structural properties, and then we test that and see that we're having a very, very structural, um, I would say, ability. And if you look at the picture, I'm actually not holding it with my hand, but only with my foot. So this whole thing weighs less than 10 kilograms, all coming from a digital model that's optimized, all the screw holes, and the 2D to the 3D is all a part of the solution. So here you can see the reality of what this looks like, uh, building it in the lab, we had a tolerance of 0.2 millimeters, which proved a very, very good tolerance for construction. And now I'm going to show you a little bit about the making of this pavilion and the applications. So the next step, of course, is robotic solution, because if we can fold it by hand, we can also fold it by robots. And if we can fold it by robots, we can create a construction technology that is much, much quicker and I would say holds within it a world of opportunities, not only for construction. So I'm going to play the first movie that talks a little bit about the potential and will show you the construction process. It all starts out by cutting out the 2D pieces. This is the assembled pavilion.
This is one piece which is then joined to the others. The actual pavilion, as I said, includes no substructure at all, and you can see here the fabrication process. So this was done at the University of Detmold with the help, of course, of university staff and it was a proof of concept because it was a really big question, could this thing be created or not? And now we're talking about the AI, how do we make these panels fold themselves and be an alternative to any three-dimensional advanced manufacturing method? You can see the algorithms active here being applied to the virtual robot which is now in development and in the end we're using exactly the same method of paneling, just in a different way. So you can see here a few of the applications which talk about facades, and after this um, there's another movie to show a few applications, and I think this will really show the applications in the facade market and how we can create um, active facades that would create, I would say, uh, a new world. So how does this world look with construction technologies, with Foldstruct? What would our city look like? So you can just lay back for the next two minutes and look at the future city. of facades. One is curved folded and the other is standard folded. There are no welds and everything is made in a folded fashion. So the applications range of course from different types of projects as you can see here. One of the most interesting things about facades is trying to increase the energy efficiency and that's what we're trying to do with facades like this that include shading, that include an air barrier, and try to create a complete facade system. So this is the freeform system. So this would be a good example of how to combine a freeform roof with a very minimal substructure, perhaps create new iconic branding for IKEA. And of course we have to ask the question, is this feasible? How do we bring these technologies to the mainstream market? And how would our world look like if we could build every building with complete flexibility in mind? from facades to roofs to furniture. It's all about finding the right ways to make these things. And just like we saw the bench, we can see that the bench is now turning into a panel. Smart roofs is one of the things that we're attacking as a vertical since if you look outside, you'll see that the roof has barely changed over the last hundred years. We're still using old roof tiles, ceramics. And what if we can use these kinds of uh, smart roofs to create air barriers and to create smart systems? If we're no longer dependent on a mold, we can create freeform for every type of structure. Now for the last one minute, I'm going to display uh, the freeform in a way that would show what it can do to what's called um, white elephants in the city, things that are not desirable. So if you look at the power plant, that's usually something people try to run away from. But if we take that and create a sculpture out of that, perhaps we can make an icon for the city. So this is, of course, the free form where we want to go using our patent uh, pending technology, using robotics, using AI. Uh, it's all about rethinking the way we build and thinking about the future city. I really hope you enjoyed this uh, lecture. 
and I thank you for your listening.